Who am I? I am. Do you think diversity is a wonderful and beautiful thing? No, of course not. Southern's extreme views have made her an internet sensation. If she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. I want to talk about today is the Great Replacement. We are going to stop them. No way they're coming in here. No way they're bringing in more illegals. Whoever you come to realize, you've seen her kind of eyes watching you from underneath a rock. You're no help, this vampire bat. This inhuman beast. She ought to be locked up and never released. The world was such a wholesome place until Cruella, Cruella de Vil. This video is brought to you by CryptoCons.org. More on them later. Who is Lauren Southern? Like, really? And has she changed? A lot of people say she has, but has she? Is there any evidence of that? These are the questions I wanted to answer, but there's a problem here already. How do you get an understanding of who a person really is if you don't trust them enough to ask them directly and take their word for it, which is the case here? And what do you do if the person's own story of who they really are also keeps changing, which is also the case here. Well, after spending 17 years of my life in real-world politics, one of the skills that I've learned is how to get an accurate picture of a person, no matter how slippery of a political figure they are, and all without having to rely on their own descriptions of themselves. All you really need to do is look at three things, time, people, and money. First, time. How do they spend their time? Then people. Who do they associate with and who admires them? And lastly, money. Where does their money come from? Typically, the answer to these questions will all point in the same direction and they will show you exactly who a person really is. So with all that being said, let's figure out who Lauren Southern really is. To get warmed up, let's start with a Nazi that's somehow so Nazi that it's actually kind of funny. I know it sounds crazy, but just trust me. If you haven't heard this story yet, you are in for a treat. This is one of Lauren's many exes, who just so happens to be of the white supremacist Nazi variety. His name is George Hutchison. He is an identitarian white nationalist runs an organization called Students for Western Civilization, and he won't eat ketchup. Why, you might ask? Well, that is because he refuses to consume anything that isn't Western in origin, and ketchup is a condiment with Asian roots. If you think I'm kidding, I would not blame you at all. So here's the proof. She had nearly gotten engaged to a prominent conspiracy theorist and had had an on-again, off-again fling with a Croatian neo-Nazi. Now, I should say that Lauren has since disputed that she ever dated a Croatian neo-Nazi, but she certainly dated the ketchup Nazi. Maybe I'm too picky. She'd mused before Hutchison joined us on her Ikea couch. In appearance, Hutchison is the caricature of the Aryan ideal. His undercut haircut, known in the alt-right as the fashy, and his fit, thick, soldier-like frame give him a Teutonic air. Hutchison refuses to eat food originally from non-white countries, such as ketchup, whose origins are in China. So the two, facing limited restaurant options, chose the British-style Oxley Public House in Toronto's Yorkville neighborhood. First up, 
is former Alex Jones protege, Paul Joseph Watson, who promoted all of Alex Jones's most insane conspiracy theories and, in a recently leaked audio clip, said this. Skinny nigger faggot activist who get in my way in London and stick signs up in my face trying to get me to join a gay faggot Palestinian cause. I don't give a shit about Israel or Palestine. I don't care about, I care about white people and not sand nigger packy Jim faggot coons, yeah? I'll leave you with that. I really think that you should press the button to wipe Jews off the face of the earth. That's what I'm not. Oh, and we certainly can't forget this fine lad, James Alsup. Alsup built his brand on base, reactionary conservative tropes, appealing to Donald Trump supporters and creating triggering videos before fully descending into the white nationalist politics of the alt-right. Southern caught up with Alsup after he attended the Deadly Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, where he marched with members of white supremacist organizations. Hey everybody, so this is a bit of an impromptu interview. As everyone knows, things are very crazy in Charlottesville right now at the Unite the Right rally. And I, I was going to kind of wait to talk about this because there's so much misinformation out there right now. There's so much just lack of information of what exactly happened. But you know what, the mainstream media is going out there and spinning narratives as it is. So might as well talk about it, might as well try to get as much information out there. And the individual I'm interviewing, James Alsup, was sympathetic to the Unite the Right rally. So James, to you, just can you let me know what you were doing at the Unite the Right rally and what happened? Yeah, so essentially I was there to cover, I was also scheduled to be a speaker at the rally, um, but we... A car plowed through what I believe were left-wing protesters there. We still don't know who the individual was who did this. There's been talk that it could have been an anti-Trump writer. There's talk that it's a white supremacist. We don't know, of course, the media is spinning things. Uh, from your perspective, as someone who was at the Unite the Right event, what is the feeling around this a car situation. So I've heard from multiple, so we don't know who it was. There was early indications that it was done by this anti-Trump leftist guy. Um, I actually tweeted that out, but that appears now to be incorrect. Um, so- Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. That that uh, investigation done, I think, by poll uh, turned out to be not, not correct. But, uh, you're right, you never know. We need to get all of the information. That's the biggest thing here. The people that are going out and tweeting, this was Trump's fault when they literally don't know the identity of the driver yet is absolute insanity. And it's getting hundreds of thousands of retweets. <laughs> Uh, so there's early indications that it was done by this anti-Trump leftist guy. Um, I actually tweeted that out, but that appears now to be incorrect. Um, so that that uh, investigation done, I think, by poll uh, turned out to be not, not correct. James, thank you so much. Everyone else, thank you so much for watching. And I'll be keeping updated with what's going on and may do another video tomorrow with Faith Goldie on the topic. My people. That's the She's all there. See you then. Thanks. Thank you. Cool. In early 2018, also joined Identity Evropa, a white nationalist organization focused on preserving European heritage, white heritage, also has spoken at alt-right events such as Richard Spencer's free speech rally at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. in June of 2017. Speaking of Richard Spencer, boy, he really gave away the game when it comes to Lauren Southern. When a while back, he tweeted this. I've said over and over that Milo, Sargon, Lauren Southern, and Gavin-type people can be great entry points to the alt-right. We've already met some of Lauren Southern's fashy friends. Let's meet a whole bunch more. Allow me to introduce you to all the neo-Nazis, white nationalists, and other fashy folks that are directly linked to Lauren Southern. After that, I will show you exactly how each of them is connected to Lauren Southern. Get comfortable. This isn't a short list. One, Alex Jones. Two, Alexander Dugin. Three, Ollie Alexander. Four, American Renaissance. Five, Antipodian Resistance. Six, Baked Alaska. Seven, Black Pigeon Speaks. Eight, Blair Cottrell. Nine, Breitbart News. Ten, Brittany Pettibone. Eleven, Brittany Venti. Twelve, Carl Benjamin. Thirteen, Christodnia.org. Fourteen, Claire Lehman. Fifteen, Colin Flaherty. Sixteen, Count Dankula. Mark Meachin, 17, Countercurrents, 18, Daily Stormer, 19, Dan Root, 20, David Duke, 
21, Defend Evropa, 22, Dr. Random Cam, 23, Elijah Schaffer, 24, Hero Canadians, 25, Ezra Levant, 26, Faith Goldie, 27, Fraser Annex, 28, Free Domain Radio, 29, FreeHitsCamp.net, 30, Gavin McInnes and the Proud Boys, 31, Generation Identity, 32, George Hutchison, 33, Gerolf Annemans, 34, Harrison Tarrant, 35, HistoryReview.com, 36, Honey Badger Radio, 37, Identitaire Buegung, 38, Identity Australia, 39, Jack Buckby, 40, Jack Murphy, 41, Jack Possewike, 42, Jacob Hersant, 43, James Alsup, 44, James DeLingpole, 45, Jared Taylor, 46, John Derbyshire, 47, John Paul Wright, 48, Jonas Nilsson, 49, Kirub.info, 50, Kyle Chapman, 51, Lad Society, 52, Lana Lochtiff, 53, Lucy Brown, 54, Martin Selner, 55, Mike Cernovich, 56, Millennial Matt, 57, Millennial Woes, 58, Milo Yiannopoulos, 59, Mouthy Buddha, 60, National Front, 61, National Socialist Network, 62, Nationalist George Grant, 63, NationalVanguard.org, 64, Neil Erickson, 65, No BS, 66, Nordfront, 67, OccidentalDescent.com, 68, Omar Navarro, 69, Paul Joseph Watson, 70, ProWhite.net, 71, Radio Albion, 72, Radio Free South Africa, 73, Rebel News, 74, RedEyes.tv, 75, RenegadeTribune.com, 76, Richard Spencer, 77, Ruin Croft, 78, Child and Freenden, 79, Simon Raj, 80, Stefan Molyneux, 81, Steve Hoffmeyer, 82, StormerDaily.rw, 83, Stormfront.org, 84, Stuart Von Moger, 85, Stike Sixenhammer 666, 86, Sewardlanders, 87, Sidney Watson, 88, Tara McCarthy, 89, The Base, 90, The Daily Kin.blogspot.com, 91, The Occidental Observer, 92, The Realist Report, 93, The Right Stuff, hosted by James Alsup, 94, Thomas Sewell, 95, Tommy Robinson, 96, Troy Crockett, 97, United Patriot Front, 98, Lee Dare, 99, VastOriented.com, 100, Vom's Belang Party, 101, BoxNews.info. Before her brief retirement, sorry to interrupt, but quick side note here. It turns out Lauren Southern has been lying repeatedly about the real reason she retired back in 2019. But don't worry, we'll get to the never-before-reported true reason for her retirement a little bit later. Now back to the video. Before her brief retirement, Lauren Southern was constantly doing two things. Traveling the world, spreading hate and white nationalist conspiracy theories, and making friends with many of the most racist lunatics on Earth. So let's go back in time and travel alongside Lauren, see how she spends her time and what kinds of friends and admirers she makes along the way. While Lauren's career really took off after she left the Great White North, kind of ironic, Lauren's journey begins in Canada, where she became a far-right star thanks to Ezra Levant. Levant has been a leading voice in Canada for climate change denial, Islamophobia, xenophobia, racism, sexism, homophobia, general anti-intellectualism, and most bizarrely has lent his platform to anti-Semitism despite himself being Jewish. In 2017, after meeting Southern at a conference, Levant added Southern to his roster at Rebel News, described as an online Canadian Breitbart clone, set up by Levant in 2015. During her time at Rebel, Lauren became extremely close to many ultra-right-wing figures, including Milo Yiannopoulos, who Southern recently described as being a longtime hero of hers. Another hero of mine, Milo Yiannopoulos. As well as white nationalists such as Faith Goldie. In 2016, Southern cemented her hatred for those practicing the Islamic faith by self-publishing a book called Barbarians, How Baby Boomers, Immigrants, and Islam Screwed My Generation. Then, 
As quickly as her time with Rebel News started, it came to an abrupt and almost inexplicable end. It was at this time, according to Lauren, that she took the brave step of going independent. But in truth, Southern would later clarify what really happened was that she got fired and then started making content on her own. When they brought me in, I was told that I was being let go. I was being fired from the company. Hello, okay, so you guys probably haven't heard from me in a while, and that's because there has been a lot going on behind the scenes with my work, with my life, it's all just been freaking crazy. And finally I get to talk to you guys about what's been going on, and you're probably wondering, why is it on your own channel? This is so weird. You've probably seen me everywhere on YouTube except my own channel. I almost never post on here. Uh, but that's actually what the news is about, and the news is... I'm going independent, woo! So yeah, <laughs> Rebel and I are going our separate ways. I was fired from the company. And when given the opportunity to make whatever kind of content she wanted, what kind of content did she make? Farmlands. In 2017, Lauren would begin her process of becoming truly, thoroughly embedded with white supremacists, white nationalists, and neo-Nazis around the world, including in South Africa, where she would film her breakout project, Farmlands. Farmlands is, by all accounts, including her own former right-hand man, Kalen Robertson, a work of fiction and pure propaganda, despite being presented this way as some sort of fact-finding mission. I'm in South Africa to find truth. Now, let's look at why it was such a mess. By taking a look at the many white nationalists that Lauren Southern chose to work with in South Africa to promote the South African variation of the Great Replacement Theory, in their case being the myth of mass murder of white farmers at the hands of gangs of bloodthirsty barbarian black Africans. So let's set the stage here. In South Africa, one of the biggest right-wing extremist groups are known as the Suidlanders. The Suidlanders are a South African right-wing ethno-nationalist Afrikaner survivalist group and believes that a race war or a general civil war, sometimes referred to as the Night of Long Knives, is coming to South Africa as a result of the conspiracy theory of white genocide. It has also recently been revealed that, surprise, surprise, the Suidlanders have more than a few ties to some extreme neo-Nazis. Members of the base expressed interest in traveling to South Africa to meet with the Suidlanders. Simon Roach, I don't even care if I'm saying that right, the leader of the Suidlanders has long courted support from various white supremacists in the United States. Suidlander founder Gustav Muller recently met with a representative of the League of the South, a neo-Nazi and pro-Confederate group involved in the violence at the Unite the Right rallies in Charlottesville. So what do all these white nationalist and Nazi-linked Suid lenders have anything to do with Lauren Southern? Well, here is an email from the definitive leader of the Suid lenders, Simon Roach, stating that, quote, the Suid lenders hosted Southern and introduced her to their contacts. Roach also frequently appears in the film Farmlands as a general talking head without Southern mentioning his extremist views or any of his links to Identity Veropa and the League of the South. So let's just get this straight. In 2018, Lauren Southern realized that the alt-right's obsession at that moment was the myth of white genocide in South Africa. So in order to get to the truth and share that truth with the world, she got one of the most prominent white nationalist organizations in South Africa to be her host and tell her who to talk to. Yeah, I'm sure that somehow led to a completely unbiased final product. But being unbiased was not the goal. It was not the point. It was pure propaganda. That was the goal. That was the point. And then you kind of end with this, this thing that there is a white genocide coming. And it sounds like what you're saying is that even while you were making that ending scene, that you kind of knew that that, that wasn't true. Yeah. Obviously, talking about the genocide at the end, that's a lie. Saying that there is a white genocide coming in South Africa is something that all three of us knew wasn't true. So when we flew to Toronto to film Lauren talking and doing the final summary, we had all known that at that point. And it's just very, very, very frustrating. Um, and I wish, yeah, I wish the people watching it wouldn't be, uh, I, I don't know, I wish they hadn't watched it. And to sort of use the tactics that were involved to sort of place it as a black against white issue is disingenuous. At the beginning, the history section focuses on a very, very, very niche story. 
and talks about that more disparagingly than the entire apartheid system. There are so many parts of it that are disingenuous and so many parts that are one-sided, far more than any kind of left-wing media, you know, bias that has ever existed, that make it impossible to be proud of. She just said that she heard all this stuff from like rumors and from kind of friends more on the far, the fringes of the far right, the kind of Richard Spencer types that we were kind of talking to at the time, that South Africa was heating up or something bad was happening there. Because the only people that were talking about South Africa at that time were extremely fringe people like like Richard Spencer, like uh, the Rene American Renaissance, Jared Taylor, those kind of really kind of fringe neo-Nazi types. It's really interesting because it's um, because obviously the online right, whether that's Tim Pool, all the way up to Richard Spencer, to everyone in between, the conspiracy theorists, it's all part of the same sort of block. And I've worked with every single one of these people and their views basically are the same thing. As a journalist, I have learned to never take anything at face value, to second guess and question it all. But I also believe that there is never smoke without fire. This is a very obvious and very common pattern with Southern. As you will see, as we shift to the European saga that Southern is perhaps best known for, Southern's modus operandi is to keep her pulse on the ever-changing obsessions of the far-right fringes, scoop up enough money from those far-right fringes to then quickly swoop in, consult with far-right fringe locals, tell their side of the story, declare that the story being told by the people who paid her and showed her around are the ones telling the truth. Then release that film and scoop up more money from your gullible audience before moving on to the next obsession of the far right fringes. Rinse, repeat. But that's not the only pattern that should be getting pretty obvious at this point. Wherever Lauren Southern goes, you're sure to find racially motivated extremists nearby. Oh, and here's another one, dishonesty and hypocrisy. See, while Lauren Southern loves to lament the dishonesty in media and journalism, she engages in some of the most sleazy, deceptive reporting tactics you could imagine. For instance, one of the women that Lauren used in her so-called documentary Farmlands and in her promotion of the film was a woman named Janine. Janine said something very interesting recently in an interview, though. She said that she, quote, felt exploited by Southern, explaining that she, quote, was interviewed under false pretenses, and that, quote, another farmer phoned me to say he's got this Canadian chickie doing a documentary about the drought, when suddenly Lauren sat her down and said, tell me about your dad which, quote, completely caught her off guard. Additionally, Lauren bemoans the use of deceptive editing practices when she's the subject, yet she uses deceptive editing tactics and manipulative storytelling techniques as much as just about anyone. As noted by an astute writer at Busting the Myth of White Genocide in South Africa, not only did Lauren lie her way to an interview with a grieving woman named Janine, but because of what Lauren heard from Janine, because it didn't jive with the myth of white genocide in South Africa, she decided instead to trick her audience into hearing what she wanted them to hear. In her video, where she proves that South Africa is facing a government implicit race war, the biggest omission from this whole interview was the fact that the killer not only killed white farmer Shock Featherstone, but also a person of color five days Prior. And we saw evidence that Lauren knew about this second murder, but chose to gloss over it. In the full film, Lauren took out a crucial snippet of footage that actually was in the standalone Janine's story clip on YouTube. At the four minute, three second mark, Janine mentions, quote, he's killed two people and he's destroyed two families. He, he's killed two people. He's destroyed two families. And he got 15 years. He's killed two people and he's destroyed two families. And then you'll notice that Lauren quickly cuts away for some reason. He, he's killed two people. He's destroyed two families. And he got 15 years. Nothing further is mentioned or asked about the second murder. Now it makes sense for Janine to want focus on her father's story, but she did mention the second victim. And we really don't think that Lauren was such a mediocre interviewer and quote, journalist, that she had no follow-up questions about a second murder. What seems far more likely here is that she omitted those details on purpose so that she could lie about the reason Featherstone was murdered and 
make it seem political. Also, there's a very hard cut in the editing at that point in the video that tells us a section of the interview was deliberately omitted. Lauren was using an innocent man's death to advance her white genocide narrative and rack up views on YouTube. Who was the second person killed? Her name was Brenda Finnis. She was only 22 years old, stabbed by her boyfriend in full view of the police. A constable gave chase in a police vehicle but could not apprehend him. Brenda bled to death on the scene from a stab wound in her chest and her boyfriend had then become a man on the run from the law. Five days later, the killer was on Featherstone's farm. He had worked there back in 2014 and this is where the events mentioned in Lauren's video take place. After shooting Featherstone and robbing the house, he escaped in the farmer's Toyota delivery vehicle. The killer was apprehended and is currently serving a life sentence in prison, not only 15 years as stated in the film. Justice was in fact served. As you can see, there's no evidence in the interview or any of the facts surrounding the case that this murderer had anything to do with government rhetoric. Race had nothing at all to do with the murder, and perhaps this story was as simple as a criminal on the run from the law who murdered an innocent bystander who he knew he could rob. And as you'll see later on, unfortunately, deceiving the people she interviews and works with actually is not an uncommon practice for Lauren Southern. By this time, Southern had already begun her process of becoming totally immersed into the identitarian movement and had developed a very close friendship with Martin Selner and his wife Brittany. More on them in a moment. But first, if you're unfamiliar with the phrase identitarianism, all you really need to know is that it's just the latest code word for white supremacy. In fact, the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally was utterly crawling with identitarians. As a matter of fact, you've almost certainly seen this iconic image of that parade of hate, but did you ever take note of this logo on his shirt? That is an identitarian logo. And here it is again. No victory. <laughs> but back to Europe. The anti-hate organization Hope Not Hate, sometimes described as the UK's version of the Southern Poverty Law Center, recently released an exhaustive report on the identitarian movement. I'll be leaving a link to the entire report in the description of this video, and I really encourage you to look at it. If you've heard one thing about Lauren Southern, it's probably about her participation in a stunt to block migrants from crossing the dangerous Mediterranean Sea into Europe. If not, here's a great recap from another YouTuber, Loner Box. In the early 2010s, the first waves of an unprecedented refugee crisis started to appear in Europe. The aftermath of the Arab Spring had led to the collapse of several regimes in Northern Africa, Syria had plunged into a civil war, and conditions in neighboring countries were quickly deteriorating. The result was millions of displaced people, the vast majority of whom decided to go to Europe. Okay, that's not true, most of them actually went to these countries, but Europe did take a good few. Out of all the main entry points to Europe, the most deadly was the central Mediterranean route from Libya to Italy. Enter Lauren Southern. In 2017, a French anti-immigrant youth group called Generation Identity decided to play their own role in policing the Mediterranean. In the summer of 2017, a group of GI members took a small boat out to the Mediterranean where they tried to obstruct an NGO vessel called the Aquarius. The group was joined by a young Lauren Southern who live-streamed the event whilst holding up a hand flare and chanting the words, No More Illegal Immigration. So this is a boat called the Aquarius that has been illegally bringing in migrants from the Libyan Ocean for the last while. And they're just heading out again to bring in more illegal migrants and we are going to stop them. No way they're coming in here, no way they're bringing in more illegals. No more! No more! Illegal immigration! No more! No more! Illegal immigration! What we want to do, we want to defend Europe from this invasion of migrants and illegals. And we need now, in fact, the help of the of the 4chan, Paul, all this, all the people on the PCs, you on the internet and we on the sea, together we can stop this. Absolutely. So, Paul, we're gonna need your help now. It's the project I spent the most money on, which was very humanizing of migrants, but the thing is, none of my critics watch it. Sorry, gotta pause it again. Because once again, Lauren isn't being honest here when she implies that the very humanizing view of migrants and borderless was her doing. The truth is, this little glimmer of decency that Lauren is trying to claim as her own doing was actually the work of her former cameraman and producer, KLN Robertson. 
once again demonstrating Lauren's loose relationship with the truth. The moments in the film most humanizing of migrants weren't Lauren's doing at all. In fact, Borderless ends with several interviews of migrants who made it safely to Europe. Not only were these interviews Kaylan's idea, and not only did he feel so strongly about including them in the final film, that he booked a solo flight to Ireland to film the whole thing by himself. But Lauren didn't even want those interviews included in her film. Thankfully, it seems that Lauren caved to the insistence of Kaylan, thus resulting in the only truly humanizing moments in this propaganda piece. But what you probably haven't heard is who was behind it, who made it happen, who supported it. It turns out that not only was Lauren aboard the ships chartered by Defend Europe in order to prevent non-government organizations from saving migrants from drowning in the Mediterranean Sea, and not only did Lauren help guide the ship itself? Quick, get, get in front, get in front, Thomas. In front of the boat. Yes, in front of the boat. Go fast, go fast. But she also did a fair amount of grunt work to get the whole thing paid for. This stunt and others she would perform with European identitarians would not go unnoticed by other white nationalists. In fact, Southern's antics earned praise from one of the worst websites on the internet, The Daily Stormer, which wrote, that Southern's seaward adventures with the Selners and the racist identitarians amounted to some good old-fashioned, Rahoa-style, white Christian terrorism against the heretical brown invaders. This is Lauren Southern's apology tour to the alt-right. So far, so good. And while the Daily Stormer is only able to be viewed on the dark web these days, Defend Europe was also lauded by several prominent white nationalists who praise Southern's passion project out in the open. Fawning coverage of Defend Europe by the alt-right Breitbart News Network caught the attention of three high-profile white nationalist leaders in the United States, David Duke, Richard Spencer, and Jared Taylor. All three encouraged their social media followers to find common cause with the European activists. And do you remember when I said that Lauren has a habit of deliberately deceiving the subjects of her reporting, and she did this with, within Borderless, just like she did in Farmlands? Well, according to Daniel Lombroso, writer for The Atlantic, who joined Southern on many of her most ugly adventures, including filming of Borderless, she and a man who I would later learn she eventually married lied to a group of asylum seekers in order to get the soundbite they wanted. Quote, After more than an hour of hunting, Southern ordered her driver to stop. She had spotted a campsite under a highway overpass. We would all go in together, she said. But her security guard, who had served in the military, stopped her to gain genuine access. They should first try to build some kind of rapport with the people living there. He would do it, he said. He entered the cluster of makeshift dwellings alone and eventually emerged to beckon us in. He had lied and told the migrants he was a Chechen asylum seeker who had met some well-intended journalists interested in their stories. He warned us that the men were hungry, so things might get tense. We ran across a highway, through some bushes, and settled under the overpass. The migrants graciously made room for us closer to their fire. Hi, I'm Alex. Southern introduced herself, using one of her stage names. You got my audio? Yeah, I can see it there. Cool. I'm Alex. She started to pass out chocolate and cigarettes. I want to know your story. I want to know why you came to Paris for a new life. As the men warmed their weathered hands over the flames, they told of fleeing bloodshed and gang violence, mostly from Mali and Sierra Leone. They had escaped via a treacherous route across the Mediterranean that has left an estimated 19,000 people dead or missing since 2013. The thing I want to talk about today is the Great Replacement. In July of 2017, Lauren Southern published a now infamous video, plainly titled The Great Replacement. The very next month, in August of 2017, white supremacists would descend on Charlottesville for their deadly Unite the Right rally. As mentioned previously, many of the attendees and organizers of the Unite the Right rally are directly connected to Lauren Southern and the identitarian white nationalist movement chants of Jews will not replace us and you will not replace us, which are, as the ADL notes, clear references to Camus' theory, became one of the most haunting moments of the Unite the Right rally, apart from the murder of a young anti-Nazi protester. But 
Southern's Great Replacement video wasn't the first time she spoke about the topic, and unfortunately her video and the Unite the Right rally wouldn't be the last time that the world would have to hear about this deadly conspiracy theory or Southern's promotion of it. A year after the deadly white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, and just a few days after finishing her Australian tour, promoting, among other things, the myth of white genocide with proud white nationalist Stefan Molyneux. The uh, fact that IQs do, different, uh, do differentiate between the races, because I think that facts are important when it comes to talking about things like ethnicity. And so this is very well understood, very well studied. It isn't the case that it is undisputed. It is disputed. Anybody who talks about this gets the inevitable label of racist, although against But maybe that's because science. the majority of science doesn't support it. No, do, do you have evidence science, for that? Yeah, the majority of science does support that. But people with different values and beliefs can live and exist side by side. They don't. We see people segregating, self-segregating into areas. We might as well have balkanized states within our country. And that we're allowing that to happen in our own country. I mean, it's natural for if Somalis come to Auckland for people to live together because they share a language, they miss home. That doesn't mean that they want to create a little Somalia and they do. take over Auckland. Well, they, and that's the thing. They, they do on. create their own little communities. And if they become the majority, but that then people, if you think look like at, that, but you can look at it happen. Threat. You don't have, yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of threats to our civilization. Southern announced her latest documentary, Borderless, which might as well have been called Borderless because I already released a video called The Great Replacement. It was during this trip to Australia with Molyneux that Lauren would befriend a whole bunch of white nationalists, including Thomas Sewell, a prominent Australian neo-Nazi. In fact, if you Google Australia neo-Nazi, the first result is Sewell. Sewell, as I mentioned, is an Australian neo-Nazi. He's also a leader of the National Socialist Network and is founder of the Lad Society. In 2017, Sewell recruited Harrison Tarrant to join the Lad Society. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because it's the name of the white nationalist who would later perpetrate one of the most ruthless mass murder events in modern history in Christchurch, New Zealand. Sewell is also known for his association with other prominent neo-Nazis such as Blair Cottrell, who co-founded Lad Society with Sewell. Sewell is also known for a great many controversial public stunts such as cross-burning. Recently, Sewell and the next man that you will meet, Jacob Hersand, were both arrested alongside up to 15 other masked men who violently attacked two passengers in a car and smashed windows. Sewell's DNA was found inside the car. The second person Lauren Southern befriended on her trip to Australia is a guy named Jacob Hersant. Hersant is a member of the Lad Society as well as the Antipodian Resistance. And oh boy, let me tell you about the Antipodian Resistance. They are an Australian neo-Nazi hate group. The group formed in October 2016 and uses the slogan, We're the Hitlers You've Been Waiting For and makes use of Nazi symbols such as the swastika and the Nazi salute. Antipodian resistance promotes and incites hatred and violence, distributing racist, homophobic, and anti-Semitic posters and propaganda. ASIO, the Australian National Security Organization, has been monitoring the group since at least 2017. Then there is Troy Crockett, described as a violent neo-Nazi member of the Lad Society and an associate of neo-Nazi Blair Cottrell's and the far-right extremist group United Patriots Front. And lastly, there is Stuart Von Moger. Stuart Von Moger is a former soldier who provided weapons training to Antipodian resistance members and the Lad Society at a camp at Mount Terrible in March of 2018. Now, what do all these guys have in common apart from being awful neo-Nazis? Well, of all people that could have been chosen, these four men and a bunch of their neo-Nazi friends were chosen to be Lauren Southern's private security force when she and Stefan Molyneux went on their speaking tour in Australia in 2018 to promote nationalism, warn against the dangers of multiculturalism, and to peddle the myth of white genocide, and so on. Let's talk about Stefan Molyneux for a second. Stefan Molyneux, like Lauren Southern, hails from Canada and is a money-making pile of garbage. Strong words, sure, but they fit. After all, he is one of the world's most prominent race realists, which means he actually believes and actually says things like this.
And if that weren't enough of an indication of the kind of true scumbag this guy is, here's one more. Like Lauren Southern and Lauren Southern's Australian bodyguards, Stefan Molyneux is directly linked to the Christchurch shooter mentioned earlier. We'll get to those connections in just a bit. After concluding her hate tour in Australia with Molyneux, the following month, Southern and her film crew began filming Borderless. Just a few weeks later, white supremacist Robert Bowers killed 11 people at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh after writing a gab post blaming Jews for bringing non-white immigrants and refugees to the United States, something which sounds an awful lot like the conspiracy theories that have been promoted for years by Lauren Southern. Around this time, instead of pumping the brakes on her promotion of this conspiracy theory and the mass hysteria around it, which had at that point led to the murder of at least a dozen innocent people, just kicked into high gear. Then, just two days later, on March 15th, 2019, white supremacist Brenton Tarrant livestreamed himself killing 51 innocent Muslims at two mosques in New Zealand. Police in New Zealand are urging people to stay off the streets and to avoid mosques in the coming hours. 41 killed in one location alone, seven at another mosque, and one person dying in hospital. The man who is claiming responsibility and charged with murder is an extreme right-wing white supremacist. An Australian white supremacist named Brenton Tarrant carried out a devastating Islamophobic terror attack, murdering 51 worshippers at two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. You know, the blood is spitting on me, I mean, splashing on me, and I'm thinking, oh my God, oh my God, it's gonna happen to me now. But fortunately, I'm alive. Tarrant explicitly modeled himself on Bravik, citing him and his manifesto as his true inspiration. But that's not all Brenton Tarrant did. You see, before murdering all of those innocent people, he wanted to give the little money that he had left to the people who he felt were fighting the same fight that he was. And who did he donate to? Well, the Royal Commission investigating the Christchurch mosque massacres revealed something interesting. They showed that Lauren Southern and Brenton Tarrant had very similar passions. On September 15th, 2017, Tarrant sent out four separate donations. He sent $187 to Lauren's good friend, Martin Selner's Generation Identity. $131 went to Lauren's good friend, Stefan Molyneux's TRS Radio. $106 went to Lauren's former employer, Rebel News. And $177 went to a white nationalist blog called Smash Cultural Marxism. The following day, Tarrant would give his biggest donation yet to one of Lauren's favorite organizations, Generation Identity. In fact, Tarrant gave to them a total of three separate times. Then he gave to a group called Back the Right before donating more than $2,000 directly to Lauren's shipmate and fellow identitarian, Martin Selner. But Tarrant wasn't done yet though. He offloaded his crypto too, sending the last bit of Bitcoin that he had over to the identity movement in Germany but not before giving a total of 0.13865585 Bitcoin to the preeminent neo-Nazi site on the internet, The Daily Stormer, over three transactions. Which reminds me, little side note here, The Daily Stormer, as I mentioned, is the website for neo-Nazis, and I want you to look at this banner they had on their website back in 2019. I'd like to draw your attention to this phrase, Deus Fault. This was a rallying cry chanted by Catholics during the First Crusade. In modern times, however, the phrase is regularly used by white nationalists due to its perceived representation of the clash of civilizations between the Christian West and the Islamic world. The Western world is one front. We are fighting for one of the greatest civilizations that has ever existed. And we're throwing it all away just for the idea that we need to be tolerant. Now, I would like to draw your attention to these photos of Lauren Southern, also from 2019. It turns out, if it weren't bad enough that Lauren is proudly seen here wearing clothing that shares the same coded language of the Daily Stormer, this was actually from a clothing line that she started with her longtime fellow racist, Faith Goldie, neither of whom apparently clearly have 
any problem whatsoever taking money from white nationalists, who one can only assume were the target market for this fashy fashion. I want to go back to Christchurch, though, because ultimately after donating to Martin Selner, the Identitarian Movement, Stefan Molyneux, and Lawrence former employer Rebel News, and after being targeted for recruitment by Lawrence Southern's Australian neo-Nazi security force, Tarrant released a manifesto online, which happened to share the exact same name as Lawrence now deleted the Great Replacement video, before he then went on to murder 51 innocent people. I can also report, I think for the first time, that this rare instance of Lawrence seemingly doing something sensible and respectable by deleting that Great Replacement video isn't what it seems. Because it turns out it was actually Lawrence former associate Kaylin Robertson who, after seeing the carnage of Christchurch unfold, was actually the one who deleted the video, and he did so without telling Lauren he intended to do that. And according to him, at this, Lauren was utterly outraged. It's unsurprising then that just four days later, after this massacre, she would continue to push the Great Replacement Theory. This is also as good of a time as any to report the real reasons Lauren Southern briefly retired after the release of Borderless. According to KLN Robertson, the two biggest reasons why Lauren retired in 2019 was because, number one, heat she was getting, rightly so, after the Christchurch massacre for promoting the Great Replacement Theory. Number two, the infamous story written about Lauren by her one-time hero, Milo. This is noteworthy because Lauren has explained her reasons for retiring in 2019 many times. But she has never indicated that the fallout over the role she may have played in the Christchurch massacre or Milo's article had anything to do with it. If this is true, not only is it another instance of Lauren playing fast and loose with the truth, but it also represents another instance of Lauren Southern, all with a smile on her face, brazenly lying directly to her fans, journalists, the general public, and, potentially, to Australian and Canadian authorities when Southern obtained the necessary documentation to officially move from Canada to Australia. Later on that month, in April 2019, white supremacist John Ernest killed one and injured three at a synagogue in Poway, California. In a letter he released online, Ernest claimed that Jews were responsible for the genocide of white Europeans and cited the influence of Bowers and Tarrant. Southern clearly had her finger on the pulse of the global white nationalist movement, and it was paying dividends. Take a look at this graph. This is a graph showing Lauren Southern's income just from Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency notorious for having criminals and racially motivated extremists as some of their earliest adopters. It's pretty easy to see here that there are a few very significant spikes in income for Lauren Southern. But one month stands out from all the rest, July 2017. It was during this month that Southern received 53 separate Bitcoin donations, all of which were immediately converted to cash. It was also during this month, July of 2017, that Southern happened to release her infamous Great Replacement video that we just discussed. In total, this single Bitcoin address of Southern's has taken in 278 different Bitcoin donations. I found this endlessly fascinating, so I did two things. For one, I asked Lauren's former friend and employee, Kaylin, if he could tell me anything about Lauren's income from Bitcoin. His response was shock and anger, because he explained to me that he had no idea that Lauren was getting so much income from crypto donations, because she never told her staff, and she consistently gave her team and everybody else the impression that money was impossibly tight. We're fucking poor, help. Um, like, we've exhausted our budget. The other thing I did when I discovered all this was I created a website called CryptoCons.org, an open source and crowdsource platform to investigate, expose, and eventually disrupt the entire far-right crypto racket. Despite the well-known and serious phenomenon of widespread usage of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies by the radical right, there isn't any singular person or organization in a public-facing capacity who is laser-focused on investigating and exposing the dangerous far-right crypto racket until now. CryptoCons.org is an open-source repository of data, tools, and other invaluable information related to the use of cryptocurrencies by far-right actors across the globe, all assembled in one place and made freely available to analysts, researchers, investigators, journalists, educators, and the public at large. Help bring evil out of the shadows and into the light at CryptoCons.org. Just a few short months after the release of Borderless, 
In August of 2019, white supremacist Patrick Crucius opened fire at a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, killing 23 people and wounding almost two dozen. In a manifesto, Crucius talked about a Hispanic invasion and made reference to the Great Replacement Theory. And most recently, on May 14, 2022, an ethno-nationalist, white supremacist, concerned with the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory and white genocide, went live on Twitch before live-streaming himself committing a mass murder of black patrons in Buffalo, New York. In total, 10 people were killed and 3 were injured. As for Lauren's Great Replacement film Borderless, just like with her previous film, she leads her audience to believe she's on some kind of fact-finding mission to uncover the real story. There has been a second conversation, one asking questions about cultural compatibility and religious compatibility. Just how many people can Europe handle? There are so many opinions on this issue from all different political perspectives, but we really wanted to take a look at this without the lens of politics. But just like with farmlands where Lauren was hosted and chauffeured around by local white nationalist leaders of the Suedlanders, she followed the same playbook in Europe with Borderless. This time, Southern would be guided by her time with the Selners and racist identitarians. Let's talk about these old friends of Lauren Southern's, Brittany and Martin Selner. We'll start by taking a look at Martin Selner, who appears to have first gotten connected with Lauren Southern all the way back in 2016 while Southern was reporting for Rebel News. In fact, fellow YouTuber Hey It's Vudim notes that Lauren Southern interviewed and promoted the Selners on several occasions over the years. Now, Lauren made at least 10 videos with and or about these two, nine of which are currently deleted, but I have them all. Yay! Collectively, they brought in at least 2,696,000 views in total. Yes, that figure is verifiable, and we're not even including numerous appearances they made together elsewhere. Austrian Martin Sellner is a proponent of the far-right Great Replacement conspiracy theory and leader of the Austrian chapter of Generation Identity, a far-right white nationalist anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim movement originating in Europe. Martin Sellner is the leader of Identitarian Bewegung, also referred to as Generation Identity. A 2018 article in the BBC dubbed him the poster boy for the Europe-wide identitarian movement. Author and researcher Natasha Straubel noted that the most well-known figure of the neo-Nazis, Gottfried Kussel, was Selner's mentor. Kussel is a Holocaust denier and was released from jail in January 2019. The Austrian intelligence agency BVT characterizes the identitarian movement as racist and nationalist. Selner once belonged to a neo-Nazi group. In April 2019, the BBC reported Selner had admitted to police in 2006 that he and a companion stuck a swastika poster on a synagogue in the town of baden baywien We have several documents or evidence supporting Mark Selner's neo-Naziism past. That's Gottfried Kussel. What's important here, and shows their closeness, is that Martin Selner walks directly behind Austria's most senior and dangerous neo-Nazi. So this is, these are known neo-Nazis? This, this is neo-Nazi, this is neo-Nazi, this is neo-Nazi all, but this guy, Martin Selner, says, no, I'm not neo-Nazi longer. Selner's now wife is American far-right content creator and conspiracy theorist, Brittany Pettibone. The British anti-racist organization, Hope Not Hate, found that Pettibone has propagated the Pizzagate conspiracy theory which led to a shooting, and continues to use her platforms to spread the white genocide conspiracy. Selner, Pettibone, and Southern have appeared in numerous videos together raising fears about Muslim immigration and threats to white identity. Their interaction highlights the transatlantic collaboration of far-right social media personalities. A 2017 undercover report on the resurgence of the far-right by ITV show Selner at a conference stating that the problem is called the Great Replacement. Later on, at a secret meeting, the narrator says Selner claims to be in contact with American white supremacists and anti-Semites. In March 2019, Austrian authorities raided Selner's home after discovering he had received a donation of nearly $1,700 in 2018 from the Christchurch Mosque gunman, Brenton Tarrant. Tarrant's 74-page manifesto, titled The Great Replacement, The Central Idea for Generation Identity, revealed an ideological connection to Selner. After the Christchurch terrorist attack, Selner tweeted, the perpetrator wants to blow up the demographic bomb we are sitting on. The mainstream just denies it. The identitarians want to defuse it. In May 2019, the Daily Beast noted that Austrian and German news outlets reported that Selner had exchanged emails with Tarrant until at least July 2018, and that both men invited each other to their respective countries. The Austrian broadcaster ORF reported that Selner deleted the emails a few hours before the raid on his house. 
in addition to the Selners, Lauren Southern developed an extremely close relationship with the biggest name in anti-Muslim bigotry in Europe, Tommy Robinson. Not only did Lauren regularly promote Robinson and share his extremely bigoted views, but the two also shared the same small production team and frequently collaborated with each other. Investigations for this documentary also turned up something totally unexpected. According to a very reliable source close to Lauren, an alleged romantic relationship between Southern and Robinson. Now, whether that turns out to be true or not remains to be seen, but we do know that the two were very close, shared an extremely bigoted ideology, and were both exceptionally good at spreading their hateful messages around the world. But just like so many other people that Lauren has surrounded herself with over the years, Tommy Robinson is, in addition to a leading voice for race-based extremism, is also a fraud and unhinged maniac that eventually found himself in a heap of legal trouble. Stephen Christopher Yaxley Lennon, better known as Tommy Robinson, Paul Harris, or Stephen Lennon, is a far-right media personality known for hating and opposing Muslims. He is also a former member of the far-right British the National Party, and the founder and former leader of the anti-Muslim far-right English Defense League, a group he has since left. He is also the founder of the far-right, anti-Muslim Pejita UK. He has since emerged as an anti-Muslim far-right pundit, working for some time at the far-right outlet Rebel Media, mostly focusing on anti-EU sentiment and anti-Muslim bigotry. 2005, April, convicted for assaulting an off-duty police officer. 2011, June, arrested for brawling. July, arrested for brawling, again. 2012, May, sexual harassment of a minor. In May 2012, then 29-year-old Lennon took the time to sexually harass a 15-year-old on Twitter, with the knowledge that she was a minor. October, arrest for false passport. On the 20th of October 2012, Lennon was arrested on suspicion of possessing a false passport and, after spending Christmas in jail, was found guilty in January 2013. 2013, November, arrest for mortgage fraud. In November 2013, he was convicted of mortgage fraud and sentenced in January 2014 to 18 months imprisonment. 2016, February, Pejita UK, Lenin, met with Pejita, a German extreme far-right xenophobic mob, and other groups in the Czech Republic and told reporters that a serious Pejita movement would begin in the UK with him largely involved. 2017. He's been sentenced to 13 months in jail for jeopardizing the case against 29 accused rapists and human traffickers. Robinson was charged with contempt of court after he attempted to live stream the defendants walking into the courthouse. In the UK, there are strict restrictions during ongoing trials on what can be reported to prevent prejudicing the jury. Robinson ignored the restrictions his second time doing so and broadcast live on Facebook for nearly an hour. During his hour-long rant, he named defendants and the charges and details of the allegations they faced, as well as filmed defendants while confronting them outside court. His actions could potentially lead to a mistrial. 2018, February, radicalization of the Finsbury Park terrorist. Prosecutors and the former head of National Counter-Terror Policing claimed that Lennon's online posts had radicalized Darren Osborne who plotted to ram a van into a Palestinian march. Osborne crashed his car into a crowd of Muslims leaving a mosque around midnight, killing one and injuring several. March, brawling while working for Rebel Media. In March 2018, while in Rome on a journalistic assignment for Rebel News to investigate migrants being evil, he punched a migrant in the face. March, banned from Twitter. In March 2018, Stephen was banned from Twitter for breaking their hateful conduct policy. May, Arrest for contempt of court. 2019, March, intimidation of critics. In March 2019 at 11 p.m., Lennon arrived at the home of Mike Stutchbury, a journalist critical of Lennon. He violently banged on the doors and windows of the property until he presumably got bored and left. The 11th of July, he was off to jail again. 2021, in January 2021, he found new targets. Independent newspaper home affairs correspondent Lizzie Dearden and her boyfriend, he was arrested on the 17th of January after he and an accomplice went to the couple's home and tried to gain entry to their house. On being refused entry, Robinson sat outside in his car, tooted the horn repeatedly, and shouted there's a pedophile living in this building. In March 2021, an English court issued an order under anti-stalking legislation preventing him from threatening or having anything to do with them pending a full trial. In July 2021, he lost a libel case brought by schoolboy Jamal Hijazi who, in 2018, was filmed being attacked by another pupil at his school and was then accused by Robinson of being a violent aggressor. Robinson lost the case and declared bankruptcy to avoid paying damages of £100,000 plus legal costs, 
and other debts of up to £2 million. There was widespread suspicion that he had lied to declare bankruptcy and clear his debts, and he actually had millions of pounds of assets hidden away which he would be able to enjoy once the bankruptcy period was complete and the debt was discharged. Hope Not Hate declared they would try to track down his missing wealth. Lauren Southern's recently released The Whole Truth video is meant to convey that she is now a mature conservative woman disowning the nutjobs of her past, leading to the erroneous conclusion that either she's changed, and by that the notion would be that her politics have changed, or maybe she was never as politically horrifying as she's made out to be. But look who she exposed and disowned in her video, and most importantly, what she was taking issue with. Her four main targets were Milo Yiannopoulos, Faith Goldie, Paul Joseph Watson, Tommy Robinson. Now, to be clear, all these people are absolute trash. But why, when Lauren's got so much trash in her life, did she focus on these four and not the rest of the lot? It's like she was sitting there with four bags of garbage and said, you guys, I gotta address some trash in my past. It's time you heard the whole truth. Please commend me for my bravery. And please focus on these four bags of trash and the gigantic cross around my neck. Sorry, gotta pause it here again because little side note, one of the very first things that I noticed when I first watched Lauren's whole truth video when it first came out was the gigantic Catholic cross around her neck. This struck me as very interesting because the whole truth video came out when I was in the middle of editing this documentary. And so I had watched a whole lot of Lauren's previous content and it was quite interesting to see Lauren publishing a video that really is meant to make her look like some sort of victim that has found herself in really awful circumstances for one overarching reason. The people she just so happened to surround herself with when her career really took off all ended up being super deceptive, bad people who took advantage of decent, good-natured people like Lauren, who's just out there trying to get the truth to the people. Yet, in all the videos that I had seen of Lauren prior to this one, I never saw her wearing a giant cross like this, which seemed very convenient. Almost like she's trying to hide behind a religion that means a whole lot to a lot of people, but not much to her. And wouldn't you know, when I dug into this a little bit more, I found out that the necklace that she's wearing in this video, that she's hiding behind in this video, wasn't one that she bought, wasn't one that she had for years, it wasn't some kind of family heirloom. It was a piece of costume jewelry she got as a joke from one of her friends just before she began filming this whole truth video. And then there's the fact that while she's trying to present herself as some sort of noble Catholic girl, she spends three hours speaking in a way that you don't typically hear from the kind of person who wears a giant crucifix like that one. Holy shit, your own ass shit, fuck the white farmers, fuck everyone's stories. Harry Potter ass fucking genius. Shit, some bullshit shit. What fuck are you talking about? Their own ass. Their ass, fucking people in politics not their ass. So fucking petty. Honey as shit. Milo fucked up, fucked your way to the top. Fucking drama. Shit. What the fuck? I happen to know this because I happen to know quite a few Catholic people. I'm a Christian myself. I also just so happen to live in a town with a very large number of nuns, who by the way, do wear crosses like that, who do not speak like Lauren did in this video. And best of all, I am certain all of them would completely disagree with everything that Lauren Southern stands for because it is completely antithetical to everything that the man hanging on the cross on her neck actually stood for. Please commend me for my bravery. And please focus on these four bags of trash and ignore the actual landfill of trash behind me because we're not talking about that today or ever, okay? So what's so different about these four? Are you really telling me that Lauren Southern has been swimming in the deep end of the alt-right for the last five years and only encountered four backstabbing, untrustworthy, narcissistic loons? No way. Look, it takes a special kind of moron to trust anything an alt-right, white supremacist, neo-Nazi type would have to say, ever. 
So no, I don't believe anything Lauren says unless it can be irrefutably verified, except for this one case where yeah, I bet that the four people she went after in her video were awful people, but so were all the people she's chosen to associate with in that sphere and primarily for very different reasons than she chose to take issue with. For example, Southern was BFFs with Faith Goldie until what, they had a spat over who got to be the first poster girl for the insidious myth of white genocide in South Africa. Meaning, Lauren was on perfectly good terms with Faith Goldie before then, including for some time after Goldie was fired from Rebel News for appearing on a neo-Nazi podcast. So no, Lauren didn't have a come to Jesus moment where she suddenly realized that she and Faith Goldie were peddling a baseless racist myth that's been used to foment neo-Nazi recruitment across the globe. Nah, that's no big deal. Her issue was that Goldie tried to use some sneaky method to tell that evil fairy tale before she could. But back to that earlier question, what do her four main targets have in common? Well, let's check in with each of them to see what they've got going on at the moment and see if any patterns emerge. First up, it's Mr. Watson. Well, according to Lauren, he's been, quote, almost completely cut off from Infowars, but it gets worse for Watson. He got banned from Facebook in 2019. His YouTube channel appears to have pretty much plateaued. Google Trends shows very little interest in him around the globe. And financially, at least when it comes to Bitcoin, which he advertises prominently on his YouTube videos, because somehow he's still on YouTube, well, that Bitcoin address has seen remarkably little activity for a guy with about 2 million subscribers. So things have certainly been better for Watson. How about the former rock star of the alt-right and Lauren's one-time hero, Milo Yiannopoulos? Quite the fall from grace for that guy. Milo once drew the ire of the left and the adoration of stars in the making like Lauren Southern. Now he's suddenly a big old Catholic boy, no longer gay, I guess, and an intern with arguably the most insane member of the United States Congress. So Milo's down on his luck too. Maybe things are looking up for Faith Goldie though. Oh, no, not good. Uh, Faith Goldie, far right 2018 Toronto mayoral candidate faces possible prosecution over election finances. So not only did her career appear to tank in 2019, but now Goldie's dealing with this whole mess. And what about Tommy Robinson? Well, of the four of Southern's targets, things are probably looking worse for Tommy Robinson than the rest combined. Tommy Robinson is being chased for his missing millions. Now, I'm not saying I have the slightest bit of pity for any of these scumbags, but each of them seems pretty well down on their luck. Is it just a coincidence that the woman who undoubtedly has dirt on everyone in the far right happened to choose these four targets to dish on while leaving so many others completely untouched? You see, in politics, there's this idea of knowing what direction to punch and when. If you want to rise in the ranks, you're going to need to take a few swings at figures more prominent than you. Whereas when you're trying to gain or regain solid footing in the level you're at, you punch down at those below you who are weaker than you. And that appears to be what's going on here. She picked four targets with high name recognition and a very low ability to punch back, while presumably leaving everybody else who's plenty capable of punching back completely untouched. Lauren Southern has been handed an endless stream of opportunities to express regret about her past in a concrete and meaningful way, but she refuses to do so every time. Instead, people like Lauren will gesture at one audience that they've changed in some way deep down inside, and then turn around and wink at their most extreme basis supporters to let them know the truth. Which brings us to the whole concept of trust and truth. If after this video is released, Lauren comes out and tries to dispute the verifiable facts that have been presented or tries to claim that maybe she has somehow changed, just pause for a moment and ask yourself if after everything you've seen, if Lauren has demonstrated herself to be the kind of person that you should really go to when you're looking for the truth. These four targets were not randomly chosen. The whole truth wasn't about bringing down the worst figures of the far right. 
It was a play at her gullible audience of lost liberals and delusional right-wing radicals. Just like any other political figure would, she carefully crafted her message here and presentation in a way that allowed any casual listener to hear whatever story they wanted to hear in the one that Lauren was telling. To a liberal political neophyte, any right-winger dishing on these four must be doing so because they've changed. Ergo, she must be a changed political figure too. To a mega incel, Lauren has reminded them of all the things they once loved about her. She's a brave truth teller, supporting the conservative cause by boldly taking out the far right's trash. The truth, however, is that both of those interpretations are completely wrong. The truth is, she hasn't changed. She's the same bullshit artist and white nationalist that she's always been. Final chapter, ProWhite.net. Check out this awful site, ProWhite.net. Basically, to understand what ProWhite.net is, just imagine if Adolf Hitler were still alive, had a computer, and had shown you his web browser's bookmark folder. It would basically be this. ProWhite.net is a site made by and for white nationalists. There are a total of 116 sites like these on ProWhite.net, including this one. LaurenSouthern.net So, to get an idea of what white nationalists around the world think of Lauren Southern, as if that wasn't already clear. Using one of the most basic OSINT techniques, called Google Dorking, each site was checked to see if Lauren Southern was mentioned on any of the sites listed at hitlersbookmarks.com. This was done by entering into Google, site, sitedomain.com Lauren Southern. If there was a result, the result would be reviewed to see if the sentiment was positive or negative. And guess what? Of the many disturbing sites linked on ProWhite.net, Lauren Southern was mentioned positively on 31 of them. 30 freaking one. 31 of Hitler's bookmarks mention Lauren Southern and cast her in a positive light. I don't know about you, but I would be doing a major evaluation of my life, upside down and inside out, if I were mentioned positively by even one of Hitler's favorite websites. At 31, that does not happen by accident. You don't earn that level of white supremacist adoration for no reason. And what's more, whenever Lauren Southern is mentioned by any of these websites in a negative light, it's not because she isn't advocating for what they would believe to be the right things. It's always above all else, one of two irrelevant things. One, she has Jewish heritage. Strangely though, even as recently as a week or so ago, when asked by proud fascist Nick Fuentes for a straight answer on her supposed Jewish lineage, Lauren practically squirmed straight out of her seat. Two, she has been romantically involved with non-whites. Sorry, I mean non-Europeans. But if a neo-Nazi's only gripe with someone is that they have Jewish heritage, have dated non-whites, but apart from that you're good, then you're not good. So just because some of the most hardcore neo-Nazis aren't fans of Lauren Southern because of aspects of her family's past and her past dating history, that doesn't get Lauren off the hook. The simple fact of the matter is that she's singing the same song as them and marching to the same Confederate drummer. 